We already saw how a component works, but how does Grasshopper store information inside each component? I'm going to be a little bit fast to cover more topics, but feel free to stop the video whenever you want to double check because data tree is one of the most important topics inside Grasshopper. And if you don't understand it right away, that's okay, but it takes a little bit of time. And most of the time you're going to face problem inside Grasshopper based on data tree information. So to understand more how it works, let's use, for example, the square grid component. And what the square grid component do is taking an extent on the X and Y direction. In this case, by default is five and a size by one. Let's use also a component called area. And this component basically takes a two dimensional geometry and gets the area and the center of that specific geometry. There's also another component called volume that basically does the same thing but for three dimensional geometries. So if I connect my cells inside the area component, I get the center point and that's what I'm going to focus on right now. To see how this data tree is structured, let's use a component called parent viewer. And this parent viewer basically shows the number of branches for this output and the number of elements inside each branch. We can use also the panel component to see the elements inside each branch. So as you can see, the first branch that, that is 0, 0, 0 is composed of five elements. And we can see these five elements inside the panel component. Note that the list in Grasshopper always starts with zero. And whenever you see a list, just take the last item and add one and then you see the real exact number of elements inside that list. Let's use another component called point list inside the display tab and this shows actually the index of each point. Let's increase also the number of 0 0.4. Turn this off and as you can see right now we have the points that are referenced with their index inside Rhino and the first branch, as we see here, is from 0 to 4 and represent these first columns of my grid. And if we want to select each branch inside Grasshopper, we need to use a component called tree branch. And this tree branch actually takes a tree and a path to select from that tree. So if we plug this tree here, we have to provide also the information about the path but as we see here we have to select either the 000 or 001 002 and so on but to select one of them we cannot just use the zero uh, slider and connect the path because it gets an error because it says that the path zero does not exist within the tree and that's because the complexity of the tree is higher than just one element that is zero. But if we use, for example, the circle component, we have this circle component that has a complexity of the tree of just one element. So if we plug this tree, we, do, we don't have the arrow no more. So how we can solve the problem with these branches that have a complexity of three elements? We just use another component inside the tree branch called tree statistics. And what this tree statistics does is getting the tree, getting the name of the path, the length of the path and the count of the path. So if we use the panel here to see the path that are inside this tree, we have the path 000, 001, 002 and so on. But I need to select, for example, the first one. Let's use another component called list item. And this list item component basically selects one specific index inside my list. So let's get this path here for my list. And let's analyze with the panel so we can see in real time what we are doing. So we have this path with five elements inside. I'm, I'm telling this component, take this list and I want the index zero because by default it gets the index zero, but I can change like the index to two and let's plug this one here. So as you can see, as I change the slider, 
I get a different a different path and this path goes from 0 to 4 if I exceed 4 it basically returns at the beginning and goes in on a loop with the same uh, items inside my branch so let's use this 0 0 0 path and let's connect this item list inside my branch and as you can see right now I'm selecting the first path of my branches let's turn the point or let's delete the point so we can see this pointer are selected because I'm taking the path 0 0 0 if I change to to 1 I'm taking the path 1 2 3 4 and so on so this is very helpful if we want to select a path but what if I want to select a specific index inside a path we go always in this tree uh, tab and use the tree item the tree item is the same as tree branch but it provides also an index so we connect the path inside this path the lists that are my points inside the tree and as you can see the index by default is zero and is selecting the first point if I use a slider also here and I take the point number two I get the point number two here this is the three and this is the four so I'm just selecting a point inside my path what if I want to select an index for every single path I use the list item to select a specific index but if I don't provide a specific path it basically selects an index for every single list inside my data tree so let's delete this and let's see how it works so let's use the list item component and let's connect this centroid inside my list component what I'm telling here to this component is basically to take the first index of every single list inside my list of lists so I have the point here the point here here and here inside my list and if I change the index to 1 I'm basically taking the index 1 for every single list and is this is different from what we did before because before we were taking a path so we were taking these five points and a specific point inside a path so for example the, this point this point this point or another one so as we can see there are different ways of selecting elements inside lists and to manage this information inside data trees we can use list item or tree branch or tree item based on what we have to do there are many other ways to select different items inside my lists but these are the main ones and later on we will see how to implement other uh, components to manage this data tree and in the next video we're going to see how to use reverse flatten graft and simplify because these are other tools to manage data tree inside grasshopper I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any doubt, as always, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and we see you in the next tutorial.